Hi, I'm Bob, and this is Sonny's Fish Room. White cloud mountain minnows are a longtime hobby favorite. They're a great fish because they're easy to keep. They're not too fussy about water chemistry. They do well on flakes and other prepared foods, and they're happy at room temperature, even in cooler houses and basements. But most hobbyists have overlooked the potential this fish has for selective breeding. They're an easy fish to work with, easy to breed, easy to raise, and they have a decent variety of colors and fin types. In these respects, they're like another fish that hobbyists began breeding a long time ago, the guppy. The species we call the white cloud mountain minnow was discovered in 1932 at the Bayun or white cloud mountain in the southern Chinese province of Guangdong. The fish's taxonomic name, Tenictus albanubes, comes from the first person known to collect it, Boy Scout leader Tan Khan Phi. Tenictus means Tan's fish. Albanubis means white cloud. The white cloud mountain minnow is sometimes called the poor man's neon. Young fish have a neon blue lateral band, like a neon tetra. The band is temporary, though, and fades away before the fish reaches reproductive age. There are three other Tenictus species, all from northern Vietnam. Tenictus mycogeme, shown in this video, and Tenictus thakbaensis and Tenictus cunei, neither of which I could get photos for. So why are white cloud mountain minnows the new guppies? Stay with me. Some fish, like the Odessa barb, are colorful enough, but the range of their colors doesn't vary much. Here's a photo of two male guppies from a population in Trinidad. The photo is from a research study. Scientists found that female guppies with bigger brains preferred to breed with more colorful males than with less colorful males. The takeaway for aquarium hobbyists is that, in terms of color, guppies are highly variable. This variability allowed breeders to start with fish like these and end up with a long, thin, colorful fish like those bred by Frank Cowherd at Aquatic Life Farm. And white clouds have a similar potential. Here's what I mean. Like guppies, there are white cloud strains with long fins and white cloud strains with short fins. And like guppies, colors vary, especially in the fins. Some have red at the edge of their fins, some have blue fin edges, some have yellow, and some have orange. There's also a gold or leucistic variant, like an albino, but with only a partial loss of color pigments, not a complete loss. So the idea is to breed fish with one or more of these traits, or a trait that your own fish have. After a few generations, you'll accentuate or deepen the trait so that it becomes more prominent. Like the early guppy breeders, Eventually, you'll have your own unique strain. White clouds are easy enough to keep. The Bench Atlas recommends a temperature range from 64 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit, or 18 to 22 degrees Celsius. Mine do well at winter temperatures of 58 to 62 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 14 to 16 degrees Celsius. I found that white clouds start to get sick and die above 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 26 degrees Celsius. The bench atlas doesn't list a pH or hardness range, but white clouds don't seem to be too fussy. They do well in my moderately hard tap water at a pH around 7.5 and general and carbonate hardness each about 80. When it comes to breeding my fish, I seem to have more success with rainwater at a GH and KH around 20 to 30 and a pH between 6.0 and 6.4. They aren't too fussy about water chemistry, though. During dry spells, I've bred them in a 50-50 mix of rainwater and tap water. Breeding them isn't difficult, especially for the standard color fish. If you start with a pair, a lot of fry will make it to adulthood in the same tank with their parents. Crowd the tank with java moss or other plants for the pair to lay their eggs in. I don't recommend more than a pair. In tanks with lots of adults, I don't get any fry. The pair method doesn't seem to work with the gold variety. For gold white clouds, you need to take the adults out of the tank after they breed, or you probably won't see any fry. My theory is that the adults selectively eat either their gold fry or eggs, or both. 
The eggs will take one to six days to hatch, depending on the temperature. The fry need to climb to the surface to inflate their air bladders before they become free swimming. I start the babies on vinegar eels, infusoria, hard-boiled egg yolk, golden pearls, and reefroids. For years, I've been working on a gold long fin strain. I think the gene for gold color is recessive to the gene for wild type colors. So if you cross a wild type long fin fish with a gold short fin fish, their offspring will all be wild type, all with short fins. You need to wait for the offspring to grow up and cross them once more before you'll see gold colored fish again. According to Mendelian genetics, you should get about 25% of gold colored fry from parents carrying one wild type and one gold gene each. I saw a lot less than 25% gold fry, only a few in fact, until I started using a breeder box to protect the eggs. If you're interested, I made another video on how to build a breeder box and I'll link to it in the description for this video. It's taken me several generations of recrossing before I've seen gold white clouds with long fins. I think there are two or more genes for long fins. One more thing, I'm not the only person who thinks we should be trying to develop new strains of white clouds. If you're interested in working with this species, you should check out another YouTube channel, White Cloud Dynasty. He's been at it for a long time, and he's really accomplished a lot with his fish. As always, I'd love to hear from you. If you're working with white clouds, or have questions about how to keep them, please leave me a comment. And if you like this video, it would really help me out if you click subscribe. Thanks for watching.